Yeah. One more talk. Welcome back to all politics <laughs> of local America's number one, number one, number one, number one wow. political hip hop radio talk show. Well, listen, man, when I lived in Philadelphia, you used to train at Joe Frazier's gym. This was a hit record. Overlay. And there was a brother who used to come on the air. This was when the 76ers was hot back then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Days. Yeah. Yeah. I do so uh, there was his brother, when a, a DJ Rhino. When he came on the air, he used to say, I may not be Moses Malone or Double D. But I can show slam dunk the funky roll for your soul. Ooh, okay. Right? Philadelphia soul. You feel me? Baby. Oh, yeah, brother. I mean, it huh? didn't wrong. It did. Oh, I may okay. not be double D, Moses Malone, it, but I can show <laughs> slam dunk the funky roll oh, for okay, your soul. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he was, I mean, Doug Henderson was the man. You can you can yeah. Google that brother. That brother got videos out there, man. He was like, he was like MOTEP Gary Bird. I mean, them brothers, them brothers can spin a record and break a record. Philly sound. So listen, y'all, we're into the second hour. Of course, if y'all missed the first hour with the vote, of course, y'all know y'all missed uh, one hell of a conversation uh, as it related to, uh, you know, what's going on in the election. And of course, you know, with Cory Booker being the uh, only black candidate left, of course, uh, to make a Mallory job dropped it and uh, Brother Conrad dropped it. And, Councilwoman McIver dropped it, and of course, y'all know Zaid. He he brought the street to it, and uh, so it was uh, it was on fire up in here. Uh, if y'all missed it, I suggest y'all go to the Facebook page and pick it up, or either you know go and hit the uh, archives at records. But we're in the second hour, and uh, so we're gonna have a uh, have some roundtable discussion. Of course, y'all know it's the end of the year, yes. uh, and so we're gonna try and have a uh, a decent conversation to leave y'all with to go into 2020. Uh, and joining us in that conversation is none other than, you know, uh, you know, the flamethrower herself, you know, <laughs> Assemblywoman Bernice Timberlake. Bernice. Bernice Brittany Timberlake, right? Where you got Bernice from? You just Rename yeah. me. Brittany <laughs> Timberlake, right? It went way back. Or a name like Bernice. Yeah. Bernice. It's a beautiful that's name. Country, it's a beautiful name, but you went way back with that one. Yeah, that's, that's, kind of, that's kind of country. That's how Muhammad Ali that one. That's kind of that's kind of that's kind of South Carolina. Auntie Bernice. Auntie yeah, Bernice. Auntie Bernice don't play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, sorry yeah. about that. Well, listen, so we, we welcome figure, y'all. We welcome y'all back. Figure where that came from. Yeah. <laughs> but we welcome y'all back to the show. I, you know, so I don't want to take up all the time. I want to just throw it to them and, you know, I'll get in where I fit in. And, uh, and you know, and we'll go from there. And then, of course, you know, stay tuned. I know DJ Rhino's going to do something real big for, you know, for the night. So I will tell y'all just uh, just keep paying attention. But before you leave, Ed, and, um, Assemblywoman, I know um, we had a very um, stressful week with the incident in Jersey City. And Ed, you live in Jersey City. And um, just wanted to talk briefly about that incident. Has it been defined as a hate crime? Um, were you home? You know, how far did you live from there, Ed? Um, is, I don't ever think you can return back to normal after something no. like that. But how's that community and all of that doing? So. Yeah, he, he, here's the real thing. You know, uh, I reached out to the brother who's the councilman in that area. Uh, just haven't been able to catch up with him. But we're going to get him on and talk to him probably next year. Uh, if not before the end of the year. I don't live that far. I live uh, in the square, Journal Square. Mm-hmm. And where this occurred at is is actually the black community. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called Greenville. Mm-hmm. And so it's it really not uh, not that far. The, the, the real issue is that no one's really talking about, uh, you know, because we're, we're talking about the tragedy itself and obviously mm-hmm. the crime that was committed. Mm-hmm. But what's really happening is, is that inside that community, you have a number of Jewish people uh Hasidics that are moving from Crown Heights, Brooklyn into Jersey City. Mm-hmm. And so what you have is a lot of those brothers and sisters who were having trouble uh maintaining their own property. What is happening is mm-hmm. a lot of these Hasidics that are coming in there not they're not only uh buying the houses from these people, they're renting to some of these people. These people cannot afford to pay the rent. So you've got some hostility going on too mm-hmm. uh, in the community. So some of the folks are feeling, yeah. Mm-hmm. Some of the folks are feeling gentrification, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and 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 so what people are saying is it is a budding Jewish community. So, but you're not really hearing from the black leaders, right? And so the black preachers and so forth. And and I would think that you know you know because they're feeling uh, from some of the brothers I talked to, 
they're feeling upset about what happened, mm -hmm. you know, with these people coming into the community and doing that in the community and putting all of this negative light out there. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, you got the folks who live in that neighborhood and, you know, they're saying, yeah, but we've got some real concerns here too. I, I know, you know. A I did see a similar woman. Uh, I, I seen her on, that's, I didn't hear her speak, but I did see her um, that's right. in the background, so. Yeah, no, you know, um, that was kind I of just want to say, a similar woman, uh, Angela McKnight, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, I just want to say my condolences to those families mm -hmm. who lost people, right? Like, we can talk about social um, constructs and different things that are happening in the black community all day, every day. But let's bring this back down to humanity because when we cut our arm, we all bleed red, right? Mm -hmm. And the fact that there are two people, uh, Hasidic, who, who are, were killed. You had one gentleman who was of Latino descent, okay? And you have that officer you know, who that morning, five children said goodbye to their father who didn't come home and he just had a newborn baby. So, I mean, hate has no place, period. Um, and we really have to do better as humanity at understanding and seeing one another as human beings instead of constantly focusing on the social divides. That's the way that I feel about it. Um, if it is a hate crime, you know, anti-Semitism, I'm not down with it. I'm not down with, with hating any ethnic group or any religion. And as minorities, we have to understand that. Yes, our communities have been increasingly gentrified. Jersey City is not the only one. Um, but I think that there's some things that we need to do to empower ourselves as people that don't involve picking up a gun. I don't know all the details. In fact, I don't really know many at all about those who actually committed that senseless act of violence because that's what it is. Um, but, you know, I just hope that this is something that we don't see happen ever again. Um, it's disgusting to think about those families. And I know that there's GoFundMe pages for the victims. Um, the gentleman, uh, one had an 11 year old daughter. And as, as I mentioned, the police officer had five children, mm -hmm. five children and a young, young family. You know, it's just it's just sad. It's terrible. You know, sometimes you see news reports where it's almost like we can be desensitized because you're seeing mm -hmm. constant over and over, over, and over you know, mm -hmm. this just in, you know, this shooting, that, this and that. But I actually, you know, this moved me to tears mm -hmm. to see that these people were just there today and, and, and gone tomorrow is absolutely ridiculous. And um, I, I don't, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't agree with it. Now there's speculation about it being the, um, help me Baba. Hebrew, the Hebrew, yeah, Israelites. Black Hebrew language. That's it's speculation, way out of the box. which is way yeah, out of the box because I've known them the to box. be very extreme in right. thought. I don't agree with their rhetoric at all, but I never knew them to be violent. But if that is the new wave, it is absolutely unacceptable. It is it is not cool and it is disgusting. Yeah, cool it. That's it. That is really, that's something we just haven't seen. And ironically, one of the things that's interesting to me about the coverage and the, the interplay between law enforcement officials and the media on this, usually when these things happen, they pull out everything under the sun about who, 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 who the, the suspects and perpetrators and were. <laughs> we haven't seen that at all yet. Right, it's interesting, it's really, right? It's really, it's really out of the box on, on, on a lot of levels. And, and back, he, black Hebrew, black Israelites, if that's who they were, are, are black Jews. Mm -hmm. We're talking about black Jews, you know, on, on other Jews. It was this, this, it's really out of the, really out of the box. They are black it's, Jews, right, Baba? Yeah, but there's yeah. also another, they don't follow the same type of laws in the Torah. It's like a whole yeah, different you know, ideology, what, right? It, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't even, want, I don't even <laughs> want to explore that because if you would, it's, it ain't nothing more dangerous when, when religious folks are fighting each other. Right. This is true. Right? If true. you look at the this history of, of, of violence within a religious, religious context, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, the Crusades went on for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, it's crazy, you know. So, uh, it was a horrible act, you know. Well, one, of the, things, well, one of the things uh, that I also thought about, and I thought about Keisha, 
and um and i and i haven't gone to a page to see if she's posted and her whole thing with trauma but they brought a little girl uh they interviewed a little girl she had to be like 10 or 10 to 12 years old and to hear her say i was up under the desk crying My God. so she it what wasn't her doing? mother telling you it was her uh. telling that we heard the gunshots and you know and, and that's one of the things that really she was in the store she was in a school she was at a school, oh, and the right school was door. on lockdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 and yes. and to say I was up close here, to hear all that. And, she, and it went on for so long. And but for her to say I was up under my desk, and we were all crying. So I think about Keisha and the trauma piece, and um, and I guess we will hear, you know, in days to come, and 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 you know, trauma has a way of playing out differently for different, you know, where. You, you won't be with you yeah. for the rest of your yeah. life. Yeah, and, and you know, people, I mean, and I even think about the police officers that were under fire for four hours and the type of even therapy, if you will, that really needs to be inserted for that, for those children who are listening to gunfire for four hours, to the police officers who were under fire for four hours. For, you know, I mean, just think about the trauma that we actually carry around yeah, as human beings survive. and as I can people. Tell you about that like on it's a whole other level. It's deep. Right? It's deep. Yeah. But um, you know, Angela McKnight, she's an assembly woman out there in reference to you know black leadership mm -hmm. and 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 where they've been. I know that they've been organizing and meeting right away. She's been keeping me abreast mm -hmm. of, of everything, and that is her community. She represents Jersey City and she does so very well. Yes, um, we work a lot together on mm -hmm. a lot of bills. Like she just did the um hair discrimination bill. Right. Oh, right so on. you know, you, you, you can wear your that. hair. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i saw it. thanks bob i shout out um so you know we, we do we work on a lot of different things together we really have a great sisterhood um actually in trenton we formed after seeing that one of the uh of our black female leaders was uh removed from a leadership position we we immediately came and formed a uh, alliance to where we have the black women's assembly legislative caucus and you know we just we support one another and she's really been out there trying to communicate you guys should follow her on social media if you're in her district um, Angela V. McKnight. She should be on my list. Yeah, um, on she my really list is. She really is out there um, trying to help heal the community um, as much as you can after something like this. You know. And, my daughter's um, family is from that community. That's a real yeah. for that community. And two too. things. We've got a Jersey City yeah. anti-violence coalition movement right. in, in, in in Jersey City, City too. Shout out to Pamela Johnson who's done some strong work on that front. But two things. To reach out to her. Speaking of Angela Knight, um, assembly woman, you just mentioned the hair braiding that um that New Jersey a yeah. separate one actually. So there's a hair discrimination. The hair braiding, and the hair, hair braiding, hair braiding, hair, braiding, hair, braiding, hair discrimination, mm -hmm. and also just the basics, um, putting cursing back into the curriculum. Yep. She just doing and she, a piece yep. of legislation about putting um yep. uh, cursive back into the curriculum. That's so right. and uh and just to say uh that uh she was also the, on the um, hair braiding and everything, and, and hair discrimination, how it um, made essence, and how this is a real issue because it was um, passed in New York, but yet the um, archdiocese in New York still uh, told a student either take your cornrows out or come back or, right. or leave. So or you the, know the young man who was meant to cut his locks before he wrestled. What was that? That was in down south Jersey. Yes. Yeah, so. so you know. We're, you know, we're out there. It's it's this is just something where it takes everybody. We right. really can't have right. like divisive language when it comes to something like this. This is a tragedy. Right. Mm -hmm. This is an absolute tragedy. It's a tragedy and it's a travesty. Well, but, but one of the things you did say, and I guess we can um, go into that. You said that how can we prepare ourselves better that gentrification doesn't affect us? You've done yeah. some. Um, legislation around housing but what is it that we as an african-american community what do we need to do if better so that we are prepared that one needs to purchase our property to reclaim our communities yeah so um thanks that's a good question um councilwoman and i thank you for your partnership mm -hmm. and what you've been able to do in orange as well because you're doing some awesome stuff too um but really we need to we really need to and and again Another thing with Angela McKnight, and it, I was on that bill as well, uh, was financial literacy being taught in the schools. Let's start there, right? Let's start at financial literacy, and then let's talk let's about how we look at, yeah, right how we look at property, and how we view that as 
uh, how we view that property and understand it as a wealth building tool. OK, so, you know, we're being pushed out of the community, but how is it that we can get, put put our flagpole in the community, get a stake in the community and remain? And um, in order to do that, you have to understand the real estate market. And you also have to understand why I've been such a champion in, in bringing to light the foreclosure crisis mm -hmm. in New Jersey. New Jersey leads the country in foreclosures. Essex County in Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, That's and, right. and, and, and you know, folks. and you know, our mm -hmm. folks. And mm -hmm. exactly, Baba. So it's the urban community that is actually leading the state, which means that it's the urban community in New Jersey that is leading the country That's right. in mm -hmm. foreclosures. So there's a there's a bill that I have. It's called the Community Wealth Preservation Program. And what that is, is at the foreclosure sale, when it goes down to foreclosure, currently you have to have 20% of whatever it is that you're going to bid in a, like a cashier's check money order. So it's cash, okay? And then you have 30 days to bring the rest of the 80% to the table. After, if you don't, after 11 days, interest starts to build, okay? This is the rules in Essex County at the sheriff's sale. So what that means is you gotta have deep pockets if you're going down there to the foreclosure sale in order to buy some of these properties. Historically, we as black peoples aren't the right. ones with right. the deep pockets, right. yet it's our homes that right. we have purchased right. Right. that are up yes, for sale right. mm -hmm. at these. At, so the Community Wealth Preservation Program, what it what it what it's designed to do, and I'm looking forward to this passing, I'm hoping that it's gonna pass in 2020, is give um, an even playing field. It's about like we have equality, right? But what about building equity? Okay an even playing field to that homeowner. So Bob, I'll use you as an example. Let's yeah. say your home is going into foreclosure and you know, well, you or your, or your, <laughs> let's say, let's say one of your children or something, mm -hmm. say, you know what, dad, this is our house. Right. Maybe it was grandma's house before it was yours. We're going to save this family well. They can go down there and buy that house with just 3.5% down. Okay. And it's a 90 business day. Um, financing period and and yeah so it's a way it's a way for for now the homeowner to be able to compete against these big money bag cash guys or gals who are coming to buy up the property blocks. Out. Out the blocks mm -hmm. yes. exactly <laughs> and we need to understand that because this is the way this is the way it goes and and we gotta we gotta learn to like listen to stuff like this and not tune it out because mm -hmm. that's we want to prevent gentrification mm -hmm. listen to the listen to what we're saying right now mm -hmm. so you might owe four hundred thousand dollars on your mortgage you might have asked your bank to work with you and maybe you weren't able to get a modification that made sense you said to them, well, the house is only worth $200,000. And they said, well, we want the 400,000 and whatever other modification they may or may not even be offering. When that house goes to foreclosure sale, it's not uncommon to see that same house that you owed 400 on and the bank was not willing to write down to start the bid at maybe 250, 250,000. So they're passing actually that savings on to the person who has the deep pockets. Now, the person with the deep pockets, they bid. There might be a bidding war. There might not be, right? Sometimes the price gets driven all the way up, which the banks are probably excited about. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, they don't get driven up much past right. the starting bid point, right. okay? Still usually less than what that person owed. Mm -hmm. What they do is they purchase the house, let's say, for about 250 when you owed 400 okay? Then they put in, let's say they put in about 50000 So now you're up to 300 mm -hmm. And then they go back to the community and they sell it for that 400 again. That's right. Mm -hmm. And they pocket that 100 grand. Mm -hmm. I'm not up. This is capitalism. This mm -hmm. is America. We mm -hmm. can actually all do it, technically. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to know the rules and understand the game, right? But this is what I'm saying. What's happening is, is the wealth in that equity, that $100,000 is actually equity. The wealth is being extracted and then sold back to the community right before our eyes. Mm -hmm. And the end user is buying the house mm -hmm. at, at, at the top of the market price mm -hmm. and is excited to be moving into a home, oh, a but doesn't really flip. have, mm -hmm. exactly, but mm -hmm. doesn't really have real equity until maybe many, many more years down the road. Mm -hmm. We have got to take control 
and empower ourselves as people to actually understand what's happening. And that's why our communities are not owned by us. Say the, name, say the name of that bill again. I won't it's the Community Wealth Preservation Program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me see if yeah, I can look at the number. Homework, homework, and, and, homework. And, and, and this was, um, a simple but, woman is, oh, go ahead. But let's talk about the, the how do they, the folks get the 3%? 3.5 percent down yeah if we're talking about poor folks right if we're yeah. talking about folks who got real financial issues yeah right that's like, a great question like some of the folks uh in greenville particularly i i, I know about one woman uh who owned a brownstone mm -hmm. uh and uh and unfortunately all of her kids was living in that brownstone with her mm -hmm. and these folks came in and they offered her and she owned it outright unfortunately she was having difficulty paying for repairs and getting certain things mm -hmm. done uh, and paying the taxes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the city was coming in, they were talking about foreclosing. So she was offered a large sum of money. She didn't sell it, she's, but mm -hmm. she's struggling right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, but this 3.5% down, if they can't, if they can't go to the bank and get the loan and they can't, you know, rally up their family to get this 3.5% yeah. down, what do they get that from? So, um, the, again, just I'm going to answer that question. It's a community wealth preservation program, and it's the bill number is A4412. It's a great question that you raise, right? And the, again, it goes back to financial literacy. Mm -hmm. Three point, and, and we have a real estate agent in the room. Donna's a real estate yeah. agent as well, right? And Fresh tell me, 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 percentage that I've seen um, a bank take in order to finance mm -hmm. is like probably 3%, but the most common percentage I've seen is 3.5%. Mm -hmm. That's in line with FHA standards. Right. So you have to have some type of down payment in order to purchase a home. In fact, I and I uh, started off, you know, in affordable housing, I'm an mm -hmm. affordable housing champion. In fact, we don't believe in people purchasing a home unless there is a down payment because you right. have to have skin in the game right. in order to understand mm -hmm. this investment. Because again, it is an investment, real estate, real estate, it's an investment. So, you know, the 3.5%, let's do some math, get the calculator out. What's the three point? Yeah, get the calculator. Got, let's got, talk, let's got, talk real numbers got, to our got, folks, you know? Use Rhino, you can use yours. <laughs> we all, yeah. Somebody get the calculator out, get the calculator out. But okay, so 3.5% on a hundred grand is what? 1% is 120, $3,500. Like $3, okay, so we have to do financial literacy because no matter what your income is, okay, you have to be able to put something aside to save, even if it's $2 a week. We have to get into the habit as a people of saving money. But hold that thought, assuming woman, because what I was going to say is that let's even get back to grandma. I remember um, my pastor saying, I don't know how a bunch of sharecroppers and slaves build institutions. And I have doctors and lawyers that can't keep the lights on now. And I was mm -hmm. going to say, even getting back to basic, that where nine times out of 10, if you go to grandma, grandma's going to go to a coffee can, her bra, or, or under the mattress mm -hmm. and um, be able to pull out something if you need some help. So we have to get back to just being able to put something. That's stash. Like stash. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you have to be able to save something. And I understand financial hardship, right? But now let me tell you, there's resources. There are free resources in the community. Mm -hmm. You can contact your Urban League. Right. There's a sister down there right now, Urban League of Essex County, Victoria Lindsay. Mm -hmm. She is literally the baddest mm -hmm. home buying counseling um, agent in the state. Hands down. I've worked with her directly, even with my own organization. Um, mm -hmm you know my my own housing nonprofit mm -hmm. she knows mm -hmm. her stuff and she will work with you and say okay this is how much you make this is your dream of home ownership this is how you have to prepare you need to clean up your credit right. credit right. repair free credit repair helping our people really understand what a dollar is and what it can be so you know there are so many resources if um the if you're in a suburban area uh, montclair home core mm -hmm. they also offer these services if you're in the Ironbound section of Newark, you can go to Ironbound Community I Corporation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Melody, she's she's really great down there. Mm -hmm. All right. This is what we do is help people prepare to, to purchase um, a real estate that is affordable to them. 
And I've seen, I, I met a gentleman, um, one of my greatest pleasures in, in, in the work in the community. And I'm not talking legislation right now. I'm just talking about, you know, the community advocacy and work that we do. Um, is helping a, a gentleman who made $30,000 a year purchase a property. And guess how much he had saved? $30,000. Mm -hmm. So he made 30 and he had saved 30. You know how long that man was saving? Because he believed in the dream of home ownership. We have to put something aside and everybody can have two dollars to put a little okay. But do you get what I'm saying? Like we can we can do it, but mm -hmm. we are gonna start doing some type of like road shows to educate our community about how to we'll apply this law. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah you, but, but, we'll but I, I think sure. that I think that that's I think what you're talking about in the long term is good, right? We're talking about a short game, not a long game. Yeah. When you're talking about people that or you know have a house full of people that they're taking care of, yeah, every dime that they get mm -hmm. is going toward feeding people, mm -hmm. is going toward taking care of health care, mm -hmm. whatever those needs are in that house at that moment. Yeah. So they don't have any money at this very moment. I mean, they you know they're basically living paycheck to paycheck. This is true, right? And I so, know paycheck so, to paycheck very well. Right. So if you got somebody who comes into the community and says. You know, look, I've you know I've got a hundred thousand dollars right now, and you're looking at your situation. In fact, Conrad posted a story uh, uh, that was in the New York Times of a sister who was just killed in New York, mm, who was homeless, mm. right, and had a little baby with her, mm. and she was homeless. You saw that mm. piece, and uh, and you know, but and, and it's not like this. These aren't people who are working. These are people who are working, but they're homeless. Working poor. Right. Mm -hmm. Alice. And so, right. And so mm -hmm. what, what we're looking at is we're looking at folk, the only wealth that they had or have in their family mm -hmm. is that house that that's they right. own. Right. And right? now it's gone. And now that's gone. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and we're talking about a long game, but we, but in, in our community, like Mayor Baraka said, you know, we've got to be talking about a short game because mm -hmm. we can't. These people can't wait for you to educate them. We gotta them. talk about they both. Get them there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we gotta you do. talk about both. And because the long do, game you wasn't help talked them, about, you gotta help them now. Now we're yeah. here, right? Right. But I, but but these people need help now. So there is help now, right. which is why you can go to Ironbound Community Corporation. You can go to Urban League. You can go to Home Corps. Okay, the City of Newark is giving five thousand uh, dollars in down payment assistance. The city of East Orange, I think, is fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. In the Ironbound right now, Ironbound Community Corporation is given sixty-five thousand per unit if you if you identify your own house and you actually want to purchase. Like what I'm telling you is there is short term and there is long term answers as well. Okay. We, you know, the short term too for people who will need help with food and things, we know about the food pantries, we know about the welfare, we know about all all of these different things. I, I met a young woman who inspired me so much. She was um, a domestic violence survivor. She came to an organization on TRA. TRA expired in six months. Organization gave her a very small rent to pay on her own. She started paying that small rent. She ended up doing better at her job, gaining more and more of her confidence back. Because, you know, domestic violence survivor, you start to lose That's some of your confidence, right? right? So she gained some of her confidence back um, and had her job give her a little bit of raise, still, you know, low to moderate income, right? And, um, and now she's not living in an affordable house anymore. She's taking care of her and her son paying market rate rent in Newark and is very happy. And I'm so proud of her. Like, you know, like what I'm saying is, is that she reached out to the organizations. And these are the types of stories that I hear over and over. Short term is educate ourselves about what's immediately available. Long term is educate ourselves about what yeah, is immediately right, available. That's right. And so, having long uh, vision. vision. I think that makes sense. Right. Yeah. I think that that that's what it comes down to. But, you know. One of the things that Asia Norton brought up and you last mm -hmm. week when she was here, mm -hmm. one of the things she kept talking about, and, and it's true, and she's you know, and she thanked me for, you know, she said, I appreciate you keep mentioning that. And the thing is, is that, and and this is something Larry talks about as well, is the fact that so many young black people have so much student debt. Right? Oh yeah. And and so when they get out of college in terms of being able to buy a house. Or even get a car, because once you get a car and you still got student debt, mm -hmm. now you got a car and you got student debt, mm -hmm. right? And you, you, you know, particularly if you if you're not living at home and you go try to find an apartment that you can afford to pay. Yep. I mean, now you got to do the math. Yep. You got rent that might be a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars. Yep. Right. Yeah, rent is. Whew. Got a car payment that might be six, seven hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your student loans mm -hmm. may be about you know four hundred, five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
where's the money for food? Where, mm -hmm. Where's the money to save? Yeah. Where, where's the money? To, so to, it's to the buy? life. It's the life right. I've lived. And then you got a child. Yeah. yeah. Right? Well, to God you be know? the glory, we're doing okay now, but it right. wasn't always the case. You right. know, going to school. You know, struggling. Trying to stay in school, um, re-enlisting in school mm -hmm. because I, you know, couldn't afford the student loan debt. That's exactly purchase, what I was right, that's, that's, Use see, savings see, bonds right. in 05 to right. purchase a, a piece of real estate that I thought would appreciate, right? Mm -hmm. right? But instead depreciated, mm -hmm. and the student loan debt came down right. and smacked me in the head. You, and, you know, like that's so how. It, the, do, it do you know? Do you know that's how most lawyers became lawyers? That's what interesting. They were, what they were doing was that they would say, "Hey, man, I didn't, I couldn't afford to pay the student loan, so I'm going back to college." Yeah, no, right? right. You said, so man, so. They stopped and it, right? He said, mm -hmm. stopped it, yeah. right? And then he said, hey, man, he said, I still didn't have a job. <laughs> yeah. After I got that, he said, you know what I think? He said, man, I went to law school, man. Yeah. Facts, yeah. Right. He so said, that's he, how I got my you know, master's. That right. <laughs> that's, and, and, yeah. and that's what Asia yeah. was saying. She yeah. said, you tell them the secrets, man. No, yeah, that's what you do, you know, right? because you could defer the loans, but and then that builds go. interest. And it's, a whole, it's a whole hustle, right? But, before, but here's the thing. Uh, we got the free community college. Okay, go ahead, because I wanted to just go back. But before you go into free community college, I got the notes specifically about the um, the woman in Jersey City. Right. And I want to say this because a lot of people don't know. I don't know if she's a senior citizen. She is. She is. And I don't, one of the things, Assemblywoman, that a lot of senior citizens who still have their home, they don't know about the senior freeze program. Senior freeze program for taxes. And, yes. And I don't know. And you make sure, at number one, that she um, visit um, Assemblywoman McKnight's office to make sure she has um, her um all the information that she needs. Mm -hmm. But one of the biggest things is the senior freeze taxes. Mm -hmm. And just imagine that she's 75. So yeah. 10 years. She, she is hasn't, 75. Okay. So she <laughs> hasn't taken and she has right. and she has not done a senior freeze. Yeah. And so 10 years, mm -hmm. do you want to talk just a little bit? Yeah, about sure. They'll go back mm -hmm. and freeze the rate at whatever it was when she turned 65. Mm -hmm. So that's 10 years ago, what was the property taxes? And imagine that savings that she would get on that. So there are things, again, mm -hmm. it's about information. It's about picking the phone, it's about calling. If we can't, let me tell you something, people, we cannot get into a woe is me mentality. We all have had dark days, you know what I mean? But we can get past it, we can get through it together. Mm -hmm. There are people out there that are actually working very hard to solve some of these social and economic issues. You know, I'm one of them, Assemblywoman McKnight, you know, um, a, a councilwoman uh, Donna, Donna Williams is here, you know, Baba and, you, you know, the two, everything that you do, this radio station, you know, when you're thinking about what the information is that we're trying to get out to the people. And, you know, I know how it is to open up the fridge and just see a light on and <laughs> nothing right, else right. in there. You know what That's I mean? Real like, talk. It's real talk. Yeah. It's very real. Come yeah. from very humble beginnings. Seven and eight. was the People work. And, and let me tell you something. Yeah. Never sat yeah. on my never sat on my behind and didn't have a job yet. Still didn't have food. Right. OK, right. so, right. Not, you know, you make it ends meet. What happens right. whenever there's more month than paychecks? Right. Right. We know. Right. But you have I, I do believe. And you know, tapping into resources not only through those struggles is that the reason why I went back and got the masters was right. to defer the student loans, right. but it's also the reason why we birthed the um, affordable housing organization that we right. birthed, so that nobody else would experience mm -hmm. you know predatory loans and make bad real estate decisions. And we wanted to educate the community about how we best can you know you want to help someone who's low to moderate income, teach them what the rich know. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's organizations out there that are doing right. that. You and, know? But but that but, but what we're speaking to right now is the conditions that are occurring in Greenville, right? Mm -hmm. This lack of education, and you know what happens when you don't have this kind of information. What it does is it builds anger, right? Mm -hmm. And you begin to get angry at folk who have that information, right. and they know how to use it, right. right? And they have the resources, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And they have the opportunity. One of the things my friend Bob Law told me. Uh, some years ago, you know, when Koreans were moving into the community and opening up all of these bodegas, mm -hmm. and he said, you know, black folk who had owned stores and were being pushed out, and Bob was one of those that owned the store, and so they were being pushed out because these folks were coming in and they had cash, and so they were buying people out, but what was happening was they had a, an entire organization, an entire community, mm -hmm. right, that was there to support them. Mm -hmm. Our problem is, is that we don't have the community. And the unity. And the right. And the that was another yeah, thing that came up on the conversation. Maturity. That came up in our in our conversation mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. We don't have the that the, the, the council was said, we don't have the unity. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so but it, and it's a matter of trust too. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about it, if, if with all of these churches, I don't understand why 
and particularly when you talk about Jersey City, almost on every corner there's a church. Sure, that's sure is. Yeah, but let's not just pick and on the churches. Can, no, no, listen to what I'm saying. Places of worship, no, 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 period. Yeah, no, but 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 churches, churches just like the church in Queens, mm -hmm. right? That brother with, with Bloomberg went to speak. That brother, not only did he educate his entire church, all of them brothers and sisters, the majority of them, them churches, the brothers and sisters in that church in Queens, mm -hmm. they're debt free, and all of them brothers and sisters utilize the services of each other yeah. to borrow money from one another, okay. to, to, to get each other out of debt. What I'm saying yeah, is the churches, okay. the churches church right could, here in New Jersey does that. Right, the churches could, mm -hmm. could, could get together and educate our folk on those things that we're talking about, yeah. but at the same time help them financially be able to move in a different direction. I feel you. Yeah. So I, we're saying go out to the highways and byways and as the scripture says. So. Right. <laughs> yeah, so. And I and I feel you and I understand, you know, and I agree, right? But what I'm talking about is I feel like I could name a lot of churches that are doing that and a lot of mosques and a lot of temples. I want us to get in the habit of self-empowerment. We not everybody can be reached. Right. Like the church is trying, the mosque is trying, the temple is trying, but there's going to be somebody who decided to stay home or didn't read the flyer or was, you know, didn't hung up the phone whenever they heard the, the, the robo call because That's they were right. tired of the telemarketer or we have got to we cannot blame. But so much we have got to empower ourselves, get up and go ahead and get what we know we can have. I, I, listen, I totally agree with you. But his, his, but Donna, you know this, and Zai, you most certainly know this. One of the things that Rahman Muhammad talked about was when he was trying to employ people in the city of Newark, they created a, a van and literally went out and parked in front of people's houses to give away jobs because these brothers and sisters wouldn't get up and come down to city hall. And, and he had to create a van to go do that because they were saying, and oh, there ain't no jobs, man. Mm -hmm. And it was like, wait a minute. So, so and, and the man, jobs. and you heard yeah. the man Maraca said, well, y'all didn't have to put my face on that thing, did y'all? I got to be honest with you, Rotman's better than me. Yeah. <laughs> well, you not well, let me. You got to get up you and empower know. yourself. You want to be better, oh, be better. Yeah, because it's Rotman's man. I yeah. mean, I don't know. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Um, what was the comedian, um, rest his soul, Bay Bay kids, he said, Robin <laughs> Harris. Yeah, so what you think? He said, What's fair change? Like a job, a knock on the door, like a he's like, yeah, No, you gotta that? get it. He's like, What is fair <laughs> change? But to to the point, one of the initiatives that came out of um this governor and legislative is the um college, free college. Yeah, have we looked at the numbers yet? Mm -hmm. Are we reaching our mm -hmm. goals or mm -hmm. are we exceeding our goals on um, people signing up and using this benefit? Yeah, so you know, it's it's really interesting and shout out to Governor Phil Murphy and mm -hmm. uh, Senate President and uh, Speaker as well, Coughlin, you know, for figuring out how to get this done. Mm -hmm. um, it was a big initiative of the governor for the free community college. Mm -hmm. Initially, you only qualified if your household made only $45,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Technically speaking, when you look at the number and the tuition for community college, and you look at the grants that are available to people through the federal and, and, and state different things, mm -hmm. those who are at $45,000 and below are already pretty much going to college for free mm -hmm. because they qualify for so many, so many grants and mm -hmm. things. So the segment of the population really that needs the free community college is actually at a higher income. So the legislature worked with the governor and we got the income ceiling raised to $65,000. I still would like to see the income ceiling raised more, but I think 65,000 was a start. So if you make less than, if you make 65,000 or below, you could qualify in the state of New Jersey for free community college. Um, so again, that, that, that also addresses what we we're talking about, about the student loans and things. <laughs> Because student loans are real, and yeah, yeah. you know what I, yeah. I, you know. But are we reaching our numbers? Have you looked? Have y'all had an opportunity to see how many people are enrolling? And yeah, okay. we'll see. We should we should have that data back probably around like sometime in April or so when the budget season starts again. Okay. Yeah, we know that there was a lot of overlap, okay. um, and you know people who didn't necessarily need the free community college benefit um, mm. from last year, but we'll see what those numbers look like. Um, for for this go around okay. in 2020. Let's talk um, some bills that are coming up. How are we looking with the um, driver's license if you're undocumented? How is that going to move forward? Yeah. How is it looking as we move forward? I'm, I'm I think it's going to pass. 
Okay. Um, I think we need to be careful okay. as minority peoples okay. um, to not use a minority issue okay. against another minority issue. Mm -hmm. I think that it should pass for sure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know a guy who is uh, in this country going through the legal process of citizenship. Mm -hmm. His wife is American. Um, they're pregnant with their first child together. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she's due in March and he does not have a license. Um, so when her water breaks, who's going to drive her to the, the hospital? hospital. Oh, my God. Well, mm -hmm. I'll tell you. The mm -hmm. answer is it better be him, right? Because if I'm the sister, <laughs> I don't care. License to get me to the hospital. This baby's coming. Right? We'll deal with but the no, rest later. But no, all jokes aside, mm -hmm. like there are people that are driving on the roads that mm -hmm. don't have a license. Right. Like, don't right. you want people to have a license? And then it becomes an economic issue because it's the same dangerous. the same gentleman mm -hmm. has not been able to expand his business as much as he would like to because he's restricted to a certain geographical territory mm -hmm. of travel because he's relying upon other people to provide rides uh, and, have, and this person is also by the way from jamaica okay. so it's it's a latino issue it's a black issue it's a it's a it's a issue across the board that's right do we have a comparative any other states have already successfully passed and they're doing um go with this yeah okay. there are states that have done it and you know i mean new jersey i think it's time and okay. I, we've been very vocal what do we need it. to get it done the votes okay we need the votes we need we need to we need the votes and we it's going to be on the is, board is on our Monday. base mobilized enough to make it happen that's what i'm getting at mm -hmm. well i hope so you know, we've been mobilizing. Y'all hear what we're saying? Y'all hear what we're talking about? <laughs> right? I'm, saying, I'm, I'm trying to bring this stuff out, right? Right? You know, you, you're getting a lot of good homework in here today. Just with this few minutes with Assemblywoman Timberlake. You know, so I'm just trying to bring this out. We got folks got to come out. You got to pay attention to what's going on in the community. You got to seize your moment. We, we can't bring back our great freedom fighters from the, the 60s and whatnot. This is our time. This is our we time. The freedom fighters. This is our time. That's right. This is our watch. Our children need to get uh, looking at us to get this right. Mm -hmm. So a priority could be the voting. Um, are we here with the social uh, issues around the um, expungements? Are we is that vote up yet, or is that going to be down during the? Um, I don't. I think marijuana is going to a referendum. Yeah. Where are we at with that? Marijuana is going on the referendum. I am on that bill. Mm -hmm. um, I did see on the voting board the expungements as well. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Also, um, it's important, you know, to make mention that you know the Black Caucus had taken a position that, hey, look, you know, it's not that we're against Im immigrants and licenses, but we want to make sure there's some licensing bills that African American legislators have had in queue for a while and, and not African-American, by the way, legislators mm -hmm. too, um, that provide fairness. Like if you, you've ever had your license suspended for a parking ticket, it mm -hmm. is traumatic. That's right. And you have to yes. take a whole day off going down to the big DMV because it ain't off. the little DMV. That's right. Uh -huh. Waiting uh -huh. on the line. That's right. And yet all of that. And Search then you have to pay a lot of money mm -hmm. and all this stuff because all because maybe, hey, look, the wing could have blew off the parking ticket. <laughs> right. Maybe you legit didn't get it mm -hmm. on your car and you next thing you know, your license is suspended. Oh, so, yeah, so you know, arrested, for Lord, things yes. like that. Mm -hmm. And then also um, child support. Mm -hmm. um, if we talk about that now, I believe that you, everybody should be taking care of their child. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't care the excuse. OK, I don't care if you got to squeegee some with car windows at mm -hmm. the stoplight like you need to be putting some money in, into behind. the hand of that child to help. That's right. That's right. So don't make any mistakes about it with this next statement. Mm -hmm. But as a consequence for not paying child support, you can have your license suspended. That's right. It's We're backwards. That's it's totally backwards. backwards. It is backwards. Mm -hmm. Because I, again, going back that's to the, that's the bottom side of mass yeah. incarceration. Mm -hmm. That's right. Let's be real clear about yeah. that. Right. Yeah. Putting Everything being so punitive to, to, to disable you instead of things being uh, position so you can Enable rehabilitate you yourself and then they thank you. Pay thank that you. child right support. On. That's because, right. Because, you know, let's say you you try, you try got the job, right? And now you're about to drive to the job, but you got right. pulled over and they're like, oh, your license is suspended because you didn't pay the child support. So but I'm trying to go to work. Right. I just got the job. To get the, you know, so we really need to think about some of those cycle. consequences. You got to break them. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. right. So, you know, I used to work in Superior Court. And if you ever work in front of them, they start for reading off those fines and DCCV and all of that. It's you very, it and before you coming out, you're already going back in. That's right. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to um, the expungements. We've seen um, states all over the country, mm -hmm. it's just not even area in terms of um, 
whether it was done through executive order signing off and people being removed for the marijuana, um, uh, just removing them for the low-level marijuana charges. This expungement, uh, once passed, is it going to be as simple as passage and then tomorrow people will be coming home? Is it going to be? Um, I don't think that it's going to be as simple as it happening tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But I think that there's going to be a lot of people, their cases have to be looked into mm -hmm. to where if you have if you have just a simple marijuana charge or a marijuana charge, mm -hmm. right, and that's the only thing on your record, then sure, mm -hmm. um, uh, there's going to be a time frame in which you're going to be able to to come home, right? Mm -hmm. But um, there are some who have, it's not just marijuana, it could be marijuana, it could be a, a, a gun charge, it could be all this stuff right. compounded, mm -hmm. like chances are that person is not going to be able to get out because of this whole expungement thing. This is really just basically for the whole marijuana. So we have to, you know, understand that it's really meant to help the person who has been criminalized mm -hmm. and I'll even say victimized mm -hmm. due to marijuana use um, and disproportionately incarcerated mm -hmm. Um, despite similar usage as those who are Caucasian and not incarcerated for yeah. the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's meant to help those people, right, that are falling into that category, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not going to help the people who maybe got some other issues, got some yeah, other issues right. and probably the marijuana was the least of their worries, right? right? right. So, you know, we, it's 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 going to be interesting. But in essence, yeah, the bill is talking about freeing people. Okay. That's right. All right. And, um, and I think um, that's uh, you had some good social. Um, I think it was a reparations bill on there too, right? Yeah. yeah talk about the reparations bill. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, talk I about saw the reparations your Bible. Bible. Yeah. Bible was right there. <laughs> right. What's uh, a reparation bill? Where are we at with that? So reparations. <coughs> um, Assemblywoman uh, Sumter, as well as I, co-wrote a reparations bill. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is to establish a task force mm -hmm. to determine the history of slavery in New right Jersey right and here. its effects on our community. Okay. And the way in which it's supposed to recommend what reparations, modern day reparations would look like. Now, historically, we've talked about reparations being 40 acres and a mule, right? Mm -hmm. But if you could find 40 acres and a mule for 10 people in New Jersey, I would be very <laughs> impressed, right? Now, I'm being sarcastic, but this is the most, you know, densely populated, one of the most densely populated mm -hmm. states. Okay. Um, so the land isn't there, right? Mm -hmm. So how does it look today? Mm -hmm. um, and why do we need reparations? I've had people coming out in very strong feelings one way or the other. Mm -hmm. I had um, one gentleman told me, you're gonna rip my family apart. You know, I'm a mixed family. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm a mixed kid. You know, mm -hmm. like, I, 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 I yeah. understand, but w how is this gonna rip your family apart? You know, we really have to, again, go back to educate to see what is this bill about and what is it not? Mm -hmm. um, he said, my taxes are gonna go up and so on and so forth. It's just like, listen, the reason why we need reparations mm -hmm. it's actually not only because of the institution of slavery that existed in America. Mm -hmm. It's that after the emancipation, That's right. mm -hmm. there were so many things systematically put into place as barriers for Black people mm -hmm. to succeed. Mm -hmm. Today, we still have redlining. Mm -hmm. Today, the insurance practices in the insurance industry right. for how they determine auto insurance and homeowners insurance mm -hmm. actually zip absolutely code. uses color and zip, zip code, code. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay, as a way to make your rate higher mm -hmm. and more unaffordable. Mm -hmm. We just talked about real estate, so that, help, that hurts mm -hmm. people when they're trying to break into the real estate right. market, mm -hmm. right? Foreclosure has a black and brown face. Mm -hmm. New Jersey, the incarceration mm -hmm. rate is almost up to 30 mm -hmm. times, the, the, you're, you're 30 times more likely to, to find your black behind in prison in the state of New Jersey if you're black and brown or brown mm -hmm. or, or if you're not white. And then the wealth gap. Yeah. The wealth, it's yeah. ridiculous. The wealth gap. So I want to shout out yes. Brian, uh, uh, Ryan Higgard and mm -hmm. the New Jersey mm -hmm. Institute of mm -hmm. Social Justice for mm -hmm. trying to bring that dimension mm -hmm. of this into this because in the end, reparations is about the rep repairing mm -hmm. of damage That's right. that mm -hmm. has systematically been done yeah. as a consequence of the particular historical experience mm -hmm. for us, it being us surviving the mm -hmm. transatlantic slave trade mm -hmm. and never coming, never having had chance to come 
out of that experience with the damage of that experience addressed. We can't even get an apology out of these folks, no much reparation. So the time has come to turn that up. Yeah, think yeah. of uh, Dr. Yeah. King. Thank you for your work on that too, Dr. King. <coughs> well, Dr. King is having that discussion. He said it's a very horrible thing to tell somebody to pull up their bootstraps when they, they don't even have no, no, no boots. Yeah. Right. So um, we talked about um, the different bills that are coming up. You have a voting day on Monday. How um, dynamic is that day going to be? This is the last voting day of the year. It is. Okay. It's going to be intense. It's going to be moving fast. There's going to be so many different people at the state house. I'm excited because um, a bill that I'm a co-author on that uh, helps people that are you know, had to go through um, treatments for terminal disease, like okay. cancer, like chemotherapy or cancer. Mm -hmm. There's some people that have been diagnosed and they're young, right? Mm -hmm. And they don't have children or they haven't even met maybe, you know, who they want to have children with, right? Mm -hmm. And what do you do? Because sometimes these treatments like chemo actually damage your reproductive organs. And there's, you know, some people that have wanted to have both male and female wanted to have babies but they can't because they went through chemo because of this tragedy, but they could freeze their eggs or do something with the reproductive system, but it costs money because the insurance doesn't pay for it. So again, it's kind of an economic issue too when you boil down to it. So I have a, a bill that we co-offered um, with Assemblywoman Lampitt. I'm excited. Uh, one of my doctors is going to come down and vote and hit that button mm -hmm. for, um, for me. Um, shout out to Dr. Shadea, uh, Jadea, but um it will make it so the insurance companies actually pay for the preservation of, you know, the, the reproductive eggs wow. or, or sperm. Yeah, um, stuff. yeah right. it's kind of cool, right? Um, and then there's also a toy gun bill. Shout out to Mayor Ted Green, Ted Green mm -hmm. um, of the city of East Orange. Mayor Green. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. he, um, he worked with uh, Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver when she was um the assembly woman mm -hmm. prior to me yes. on this mm -hmm. bill and uh, we're hoping to see it pass but it's listed up on the board mm -hmm. and shout out to senator nelly poe who sponsored it on the senate side so basically what it says is that if there's a toy gun it has to look like a toy like maybe it's a different color maybe it's neon maybe it's orange mm -hmm. but it can't look like a real gun because yeah. you know um you saw me get emotional for a minute. Mm -hmm. I know. There's brothers that there's brothers that have been shot for, for pulling off the, the, the wallets. Mm -hmm. You Nicholas know, Hayward, we definitely don't need to have our children play with old. toy guns. We lost his father, Nicholas Hayward Sr. last year, who went to his grave trying to get justice for his son who was killed over that same thing mm -hmm. by a black police officer mm -hmm. who saw the boy put the gun down and blew him away My anyway. Boy. Right? And the DA at the time that was uh, in, in Brooklyn, I can't recall his name right now, mm -hmm. said he was going to reopen the case. That man fought for everybody on the battlefield of police brutality around that issue up until cancer took him out of here. Oh, Lord. You know, oh, yeah. this is past DA. year. So, oh, yes. you know, I'm, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm mm, so, in on this on a bunch of levels. Right yeah. on. Three so, three think about Tamir Rice. Right? That's yes. right. 12 years Young old. Man, 12 years old. Baby. Come on now. So, as we close, assembly woman, one of my. Um, we close it already? Uh, yeah, we're there. Why? It's that time because it's that time. You can't freeze the clock. But well, before we look, what? I want to thank you. Mm -hmm. You know how I feel about that. Look, independent prosecutors bill was one of our big victories mm -hmm. in this past year. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. Independent. So I you know, I want to thank you, daughter, for, for your role and making that happen and whatnot. And that and that's so important. And we need to make sure this new attorney general gets some political education that he gotta make that stuff work. Okay. Right, Mr. Greenwall, I'm talking to mm -hmm. you. Right, we got to make this stuff work. We're gonna pay you some visits. Make sure you mm -hmm. got that right. Finish your point. I'm so, sorry, I had, to, I had to get that in there. As I reflect on the year and the many things that you have done, um, we have my, done. We, we have done. done. Yes, we, we have, have done. done. That's well, right. one of the, my favorite is you're you being on the um, floor during the um, discussion as preparing for a vote, and it was two men <laughs> arguing about women's reproductive. <laughs> And you had to step in and say, listen, really? you know, so I just want to thank you <laughs> that and, and that you you do have the courage to rein people in and to speak truth to power and to stand in your truth during those times, because we have to recognize that um, our voice is only given for the appointed time. We're not promised a reelection. We're not promised any of that. We're not even so, promise you're going to the we'll wake up tomorrow. That's right. So to know that while you're down there, that you're fighting, you're doing it with passion and you're doing it, taking 
um, the burdens of the people from the 34th district. We really appreciate it. Right. Um, and right. under the sound of my voice, for the people who are listening, Orange, uh, Assembly Woman will be with us at the council meeting in Orange to just continue to highlight what she's doing and to listen to um, the, council. the council people in Orange and just um, continue to do the work. You know, we're at December 13th, 18 more days, and then it's another 365. So yeah. thank you. Well, thank 2020 you. is going to be a hot year for all those things we got to do. We got to turn it up. And, thank you, and, and I thank do want to say, and Ed, I know we are over time, but if I can give you the last word in terms of um, Assemblywoman in 2020, we're in presidential election, we're in census. What the last word, what do we want, you know, as a, from your position, what is it that you need the people to hone in or focus on? The census can be intimidating. Mm -hmm. It can be a little stressful asking questions in my business, you know, like that's how I feel about I'm like what you don't know about my business. Well, what time do you leave for work? Like some of the questions are just like what, you know, fill it out, fill it out and send it back. Because honestly, it's so incredibly important and it's going to determine what the resources that we get as well as the representation, the amount of representation in districts that we actually have. So please fill that out and please tell your neighbors it's so important. I know that historically, I, I believe and historically as a people, we got a problem with folk in our business. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I know that I do. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, fill it out. Don't don't look at it like that. Don't be afraid. This is not something that's going to be used to if you're not um, if you are not uh, legal, fill it out. This is not something that's going to be used to come and to find you or to to, to harm you or to deport you. Um, just please fill it out. It's used to count and to know how many people are in any particular area. And, you know, I think 2020 is going to be um, dynamic. Um, I think that we've done a lot in 2019, but it's about looking forward. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, Councilwoman, I appreciate the partnership and everything that you're doing in the city of Orange because mm -hmm. you're doing so much. And I'll tell you, when we did that stuff at the county for affirmative action, mm -hmm. um, you know, That's Orange right. filed suit and was right there. And mm -hmm. Donna Williams was That's the leader right. on That's that, right. making sure that there was opportunity That's for right. women owned businesses, minorities, as well as mm -hmm. veteran owned businesses to have a piece of the pie in the government contract bid processes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Donna, you really do a lot in the community too. Mm -hmm. And I think that, yeah, you know, what know. we do as elected officials, sometimes it could be a thankless job, but we don't do it to, to, to hear, thank you. Mm -hmm. We do it for the right well, I'll reasons. i both of you, right? Mm -hmm. Madam Councilman, Madam Assemblywoman, I'm proud, of, I'm proud of both of you. I have no problem saying that. I'm proud that. of you that too, I'll take you all over the country. <laughs> talking with you because I'm I'm always you know I'm 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 one of those rock pillars on the outside mm -hmm. that's trying to keep our folks honest on the inside that are right. playing games mm -hmm. with, with right. the resources that we have at that's our disposal. Right. I have some examples that are doing the right thing. I hold y'all up high. Thank you. All right. We so so right on. Too. Just keep doing what you're doing. We got your back. DJ Ryan, you ready to take us there? Mm -hmm. You want to hear uh, what a similar woman's favorite uh, hip hop song is as she goes out of town? Uh, she's been there before. Yeah, yeah, she's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, what do you think that's she gonna right. what do you think she gonna say? Nah, that's right. Nah, okay. That's my guy. It was written, I think. It was written in Stomatic. Uh, those are those are my two favorite okay. albums. <laughs> DJ Rhino is on you and we'll see you Ride, Rhino, ride. Thanks, Baba. Thanks, Baba. Phase two. One, two. It's queued 